Have you ever considered relighting your photo or design in Photoshop? Today we'll take a look at Lighting Effects, a pre-installed filter that can do just that. Before we get started, it's important to check that you're working in RGB workspace. You can do this by going to Image, Mode, RGB Mode. This is essential for the filter to work, otherwise it will be greyed out. If you're committing to this transition, it's important to choose Don't Flatten when the dialog box pops up, otherwise you'll end up with one layer. So once this is all set up, select the layer you want to add lighting to and go to Filter, Render, Lighting Effects. The first thing you should see is a spotlight on top of your image. If you see more than one light in the layers panel, press the trash icon until there is one remaining. A spotlight can be resized manually using the four points surrounding it. You can move it by dragging it with your cursor. And the intensity level can be adjusted with the dial in the center, which is linked to its slider on the right. The inner circle that's present refers to the hotspot of the light. You can choose to control it here, or again on the right hand side with precision. Spotlights are great for targeting areas that need a dramatic look. You can add more than one by pressing the spotlight icon on the top banner here. And without a question, once you add a new one, it becomes its own entity. So the first one you created isn't affected by any changes. It is advised to manage light sources in the layers panel while renaming each layer accordingly when dealing with larger projects. The second light is known as the point light and it works like a floating light bulb in space. You can still adjust the intensity or any other settings in the menu, but to resize it, you need to hover your cursor on the outline until it turns yellow. Thirdly, an infinite light is like the sun. You can actually see a sun icon move around the image when you turn the direction of the pin. Intensity adjustment is possible, but there's nothing to resize, hence the name Infinite Light. I would probably call this one a directed exposure setting since this is kind of what it does when you angle all of the light onto your image. Now that we have a grasp on these three tools, we can begin to light the scene. Here's a quick time lapse of me doing that. And here's the before and after. Before you try this out yourself, I'd like to let you know that lighting effects has a lot of software bugs. So here are a few things you can do if it's not working for you. And this was Design Dummy.